Well, hello, my darlings, and welcome back to Divine Rebel. My name is Racy, and I will be doing the reading for you today. For those of you who are new to the channel, this is a general energy reading for your collective zodiac sign, so it may or may not resonate. If it doesn't, let it go. Don't force it to fit. Check your other planetary alignments in your, in your birth chart. Um, if you don't know what they are, if you don't know where to find them, you can Google sites that will generate a free birth chart for you. You just need to know the day you were born, the time you were born, um, and where you were born, the location. Okay, so if you know those things, you'll get the most accurate chart and as far as your placements. Um, and I do want to give you a little insight into what those placements mean so that as you, you know, watch your sun sign, you can also get an idea of what the other placements mean when you watch the other signs, right? How they resonate for you based on your birth chart. All right, your sun sign, that's how others see you. Your rising sign is how you see yourself. Your moon is the hardest part for you to understand. It's your shadow self, your moon. That's what triggers, that's what's healing in this life cycle, is your moon, okay? Your mercury placement, whatever sign that's in, that's how you're communicating. That's your style, that's your tactics, like this is how you're communicating, all right, wherever your mercury is sitting. Your Venus placement is how you love. It's how you love. That's your divine feminine aspect within. We all have it, you know, masculine and feminine aspects. We are divinely dualistic beings. And we all have a masculine and feminine. Wherever your Venus placement is, that's your heart space. That's what your heart wants. That's what your heart feels. That's what your heart, you know, anticipates or wants you to choose or wants you to go against, you know, or wants you to know, you know, it's your intuition, it's your divine feminine aspect, and it's how you love. Your Mars is your divine masculine. That's your divine masculine aspect. That is what you're passionate about. That is what your most, that's your most likely action to take. Your Mars is your most likely action to take. Most likely what you chose. You know, it's the emperor, it's very much in the egoic mind, you know, so even though it's the most likely choice, it's the most likely path, it's usually not the best one right when you follow it your masculine it's, it's more what you're probably gonna do based on your experience you know it's reacting it's kind of like reacting your masculine energy but it, it as far as taking actions but it is what you're passionate about it's the things you'd go to war for you know it's it's almost like the integrity of your character right the integrity of your character is your Mars Jupiter is where you get lucky. Wherever your Jupiter placement is, that's what brings you the most abundance. That's what expands your life. That's what opens doors. Wherever your Jupiter placement is, is lucky for you. It generates good things wherever your Jupiter placement is. Okay? Good things. Saturn is your 3D reality. That's how your inner being is manifesting and reflecting into the outer world. So this is what the actual, your Saturn placement, whatever sign that's in, that's what's actually like going down in the 3D. Um, it could also be what's going on with your career, with your finances, you know, your money flow, things like that, because it's about the, the physical world, right? And that's money. Uranus is what catches you by surprise. <laughs> Uranus is that unexpected possibility where the divine intervenes in someone's consciousness and gives them a eureka moment or an aha moment and they do something on a whim and it's like didn't expect it right it's that kind of energy that possibility that's out there and it could be a good thing or a bad thing you know Uranus is a curveball <clears throat> but it's someone getting an aha moment is someone getting an aha moment and changing things. So your Uranus is the expect the unexpected, that just in case, expect the unexpected, that rare, <laughs> impossible made possible scenario. Yeah, just know that that is actually floating around in the ether, okay? 
um, that's when the divine comes to your conscious mind to manifest in the physical. Neptune is the emotional current life karma that's healing, the emotional healing. All right, from this lifetime. So this is your, this is your inner child healing. This is your um, fixing of the programming, you know, from when you were a child dealing with your parents and relationships and, and the, the ideas and perspectives and beliefs that you took on as a kid that followed you into your adulthood, that affected your adult relationships, you know, your adult work environments, like how you view money, like the different aspects that you picked up as a kid and how it's playing out. Like that's the subconscious mind right Neptune's the subconscious it's what we're manifesting in the physical world that we don't that we don't realize and it's coming from this lifetime and things that we could heal from our our memory Pluto is past life karma that's past life cycles these are huge deep soul lessons this is how you transform right this is how your soul transforms this is how you elevate so if you're following your Pluto you know it's it, Pluto is is ruled by Scorpio which is the scorpion and you know the scorpions is its own worst enemy it's about self-sabotage it's about that sting you know that that <clears throat> hard pill to swallow you know it's painful the healing stings and so whenever you dredge something up from that deep you know it, it tends to sting so it's good to know where that placement is and where it's coming from so that you can kind of you know what I mean prepare for that your north node is your destiny, and your south node is your karma. If you follow your north node placement, that's your highest good path. That's your authentic path. That's your purpose. That's why you're here. You're meant to follow that. That's your highest good. Your south node, which is 180 degrees opposite your north node, is your karma. It's the possibilities. It's the choices. It's the outcomes. It's the players involved that get you locked in karmic cycles, and you want to avoid it. You want to avoid it because you don't want to get stuck in karma. You want to reach your purpose, your destiny here, your highest good life, the authentic path, you know, completing the mission, the soul mission. So you follow your north node. Everything else with all of your placements, make sure you're watching out for cusps. Whenever you have a cusp, it's, it's in the transit between two signs. So zero is the actual cusp line and you can go two degrees in or two degrees back, right? So it's the 28th or 29th degree of a sign. It's the last two degrees, the actual cusp on zero degrees, and then the first two degrees of the new sign, the first and the second degree. All right, those are cusps, 28, 29, zero, one, and two. And if that's the case in any of your alignments, make sure you're following both signs, energies, because you're probably gonna be internally you know, conflicted when it comes to those things, okay? You're gonna have some kind of internal conflict between them because those energies, you know, between two signs, they're never the same element. They never speak the same language. They're total opposites, masculine and feminine duality. So, you know, your cusp signs say a lot about what you're going through, so make sure you follow your cusps. All right, so getting into Libra. Getting into Libra, all right? First two cards I asked Libra, I got my Psychic Tarot, the Heart deck, and my Wisdom of the Oracle deck. And I said, well, what the heck did you do that got you here, right? What happened before April that all of this energy about April is going to be about? What happened, right? What was leading up to this? They have the Eight of Wands in reverse. This is success and growth. This is also a Cupid's arrow card. And in reverse, this is most certainly not a success. This is most certainly not growth. So something completely shut down. Maybe in the love department maybe in the passion department. Because 
Libra. This is your energy with the scales. You weren't being fair. I'm going to say you weren't being fair. Take it how it resonates for you, but I'm pulling a specific Libra. You know, you've got the fortune cookie that says nope, and you've got the pearl this or this egg, right? This divine egg. And you have the wisdom. You have the owl on your crown. The divine's guiding you, and you knew it. But whatever this fortune nope is, and whatever this egg is, I promise you, they are not of equal value. And you are making them equal value. And one isn't worth the weight at all. Nope. Like, what is it even doing on the scales? What is it even doing on the scales? It's like it's making everything on balance. It's not fair. It's not fair that someone's getting the egg and someone's just getting this fortune. Like, oh, nope, not today. Oh, you're getting all of this? Oh, nope, you're not getting nothing. It wasn't fair, Libra. There was no success in growth because it was not fair and balanced, whatever it was whatever it was, and that's why it shut down. There was no equal exchange. There was no equal give and take. Someone was a taker and someone was a giver, and that wasn't fair. That wasn't fair. So where the hell are you going for April, Libra? Hermit, which is the Virgo card, so you can be a Virgo Libra cusp. You've got to shine the light on your shadow, on your moon. You could be dealing with a Cancer. You know, this Hermit. feel like the path that he's looking at, because his clothes are, are torn, they're ripped, he's weathered, he's tired, you know, it's like he's tired, and he's holding up this lantern and he's still dealing with, you know, healing and receiving these messages and he's looking at how how far the road seems and it's like you can almost see especially if there's a feminine in your life this cancer moon she's in the moon it's like she's guiding you in dream state she's guiding you in dream state there's communication with the bird there she's helping you try and find your way through the mountains through through the rocky you know cre crevices and it's like she's like hey you know, just keep shining your light like I'm here too. I'll make sure there's light from the moon here too. You know. Dream state. And, you know, she has this jewel on her third eye. It's most definitely dream state. She's guiding you. Guiding you through this. You know, because part of you, Libra... You're heartbroken. Three of Swords. This didn't work out. And you're heartbroken over it. That's because it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. You can't give nothing and nurture nothing and expect something to grow and be awesome.
whoever wasn't fair, you kind of did it to yourself. You broke your own heart. And that's the awakening moment you got to come to. You got to get in touch with your angels. You got to call in your angel squad. They didn't leave you. Call your angels. Call in Archangel Gabriel to help you communicate your truth to you. Because that's what's on the other side of this Three of Swords. This flower, this blue flower of truth, the truth hiding behind the heartbreak. The truth hiding behind the heartbreak is that someone's really sad over it. That's the truth. That's what's going on behind the facade of my heart's broken and I'm sad. The truth is you fucking miss it and I think you fucking knew you did it. That's why we get the judgment card. You're judging yourself for it. Only you can clear that judgment. Only you can write that shit. You know what I mean? You know what your truth is. But you're just, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like something got shut off. Something got shut down. What energy archetype are we dealing with? The monk or the nun? And the upright. So for April, what spirit, what source, what your higher self is working on for you is selfish devotion and single-minded dedication to spirit. That is you and your divine oneness doing as you're guided via your intuition, your heart space checking off with your head space. Yes, we approve of that message. Yes, we approve of that action. Both. It has to feel right or don't do it. And it has to make sense. It has to be feasible or you can't do it. You have to dedicate yourself to that. Selfless devotion and single-minded dedication to your highest self, your authentic path. Check your north node check your heart space because that's broken that needs to fix check your venus placement shit you might want to check your mars placement with the sun on his chest if you have leo if you have any leo placements check your leo about changing your perception of things. Seeing how the divine works when things aren't fair. Yeah, what's healing for Libra? Yeah, this is about fulfillment, Libra. My God, this is a sacral chakra. It's about releasing obligation and guilt. It's about going after your joy. You're craving fulfillment. Your goal, your inner being is passion in this life. You weren't meant for dull. You weren't meant to be tied down by guilt and obligation. You are meant to follow your desires. That's what's healing. That's what the universe is helping you heal. Your feeling of being fulfilled. That's what the universe's focus is for you for April. You have to want fulfillment. You're gonna. You're. You, you have to want to make this right. and allow that communication to come in strong. Archangel Gabriel is the Archangel of Communication. Call on him. Be 
because if it wasn't fair and everything got stopped, then the only way to start it up is to make it fair. You gotta go after it. Whatever it is. Your fulfillment, your joy, is the cards telling you. April is gonna be pushing that to heal. So the more you fight it, just know, the more you fight it, what you resist persists, just saying. Headspace, heart space. Headspace, you're telling yourself you're making your highest good choices. In your mind, you're doing what's best for you. You're doing what's best for you. But your heart space, you hate going to sleep because of your dreams, feeling haunted. Feeling haunted. Because this feminine energy, who is obviously very connected with you, is showing up in your dream states. You're putting her there. You know what I mean? And if she wasn't in the back of your mind and your subconscious and unconscious levels, you know, if you weren't blocking her out in your conscious mind, you know, I say her, but you know, take it how it resonates. Um, yeah, because you're blocking her out. It's like you're getting this. This overwhelm. It's like you're trying to convince yourself. Try, you're trying to convince yourself, and yet your higher feminine, you know, or your your higher desire, what your heart space is craving to heal, what your heart space is craving to heal. It's haunting you in your dreams. It's a wrong that isn't righted yet. This is how source works. This is how the universe works. When you're on this authentic path and the universe wants to keep you on it, they don't want you, you know, deterring from the path like, hey, you're making it more difficult on yourself. You know, like just go be happy for crying out loud. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's choice. It's a choice. Fulfillment is a choice. So angels, oh, we got two. Angel therapy and crystal clear intentions. You got to reconnect to your angels, man. Think about this. Look at all these cards. Reconnect to your fucking light. They're there. Promise. Your angels are all over this fucking reading. Yeah, you got Gabriel, you got Raphael, you got Michael, you got the fucking, you got the top three right there. Archangel Raphael, give your cares and worries to us angels. And allow us to take your burdens, give it up, let it go. Your worries, your fears, your anxieties, the things that you're holding on to and clinging to that are ruining this shit. Ask your angels to please come in and take it for you. That you don't want to carry that burden anymore. That you don't want to carry this healing anymore. That you don't want to live unfulfilled anymore. That you want to experience joy now. Call on your angels. They will come to you. They will start to shift your 3D. Because the more you call on them and the more you trust that they're working in the background, whether you can see it or not, you're going to shift your vibration to success and what's fair and balanced. Divine balance. You can flip this whole thing around. Call in your angels. Unwavering faith. Unwaver unwavering faith in the highest good. Archangel Michael. Be clear about what you desire and focus upon it with unwavering faith. Focus on your success. Focus on the success. Focus on the desire being fulfilled. Taking steps towards that. Every little step you take is closer to reaching this. There's steps that you can take. Hold the intention. Call on your angels. Turn it around. 
turn it around. Simply call in your light back to yourself. Call it in. Get as bright as you can. Get as bright as you can, Libra. Your intuition doesn't lie. You're, pay attention to your red flags. Pay attention. I'm getting this is way like, look at, look at all of this symbolism, right? With the Japanese symbolism. This is way different than the other cards, way different. This goes back, recognize your own triggers. The signs are cautioning you. You know, this is like, this is like past life stuff where like you could see he's on the ground and she's looking at him and this ghost is coming in with the lily. It's symbolic of death. You know, the Japanese, when back in the day, like it was honorable to do ritual suicides, you know what I mean? When, when you, you weren't kind of turning yourself in, when you failed to protect your town kind of thing, instead of going prisoner, they allowed you the right to, to not take in prisoner and kill yourself. And it's like self-sabotage, self-sabotage. How are you killing yourself? Metaphorically speaking, Libra, how are you continuing to do this? Call in your angels. These are your demons. This is the past life stuff that you're dealing with. The stuff that's coming up. Check your Pluto. Because this, what you desire, whatever got turned off, whatever this light is, whatever you're heartbroken over, the reason why you can't let it go. The reason why it hurts. I shit you not. This is your divine counterpart. This is the divine lessons of healing that y'all, that you're going through with them. This person, I said, she's with you even in dream state. I had the soulmate and the twin flame cards come out earlier in the other reading, so this is like the closest you get. Libra, you're dealing with your divine counterpart. This is your this is your soul wife or your soul husband right here. Married heart and soul for fucking eternity. It has everything to do with sacred union within the self. You have to join and integrate your divine masculine and feminine energies. You got to get your masculine energy, your Mars and your Venus clicking. You got to get them to start checking off on things together. Follow your North node. Follow your North node. Look at what your moon aspects are. Figure out your shadows. Go to work on yourself. Go to work on yourself. Set that clear intention with your angels that you're going to heal this shit. You're gonna heal this shit. You're making your highest good choices right now. Amen. You don't wanna to go to sleep like this, feeling haunted. You don't, you don't. It's your inner calling. It's like quite literally like your soul wife calling you. In dream state. Can't talk to you any other way, right? So it's like, there she goes. She ain't giving up on you. <laughs> this is a very, this is, you guys were like wed way before this lifetime. Your souls are contracted together. You're a couple married. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you need to heal your shit, Libra. You need to heal your shit. Reminder, elevation. You are making the conscious decision to raise your vibration of love. You gotta elevate yourself. You gotta elevate your vibe. Self-love is divine union within. That's the sacred union within the self. Being married to your higher path. Being married to your destiny. Following it. Choosing consciously. Choosing to elevate your vibration. Out of whatever darkness you're in. Choosing to call in your light. Your light will bring you home. It's your lighthouse. She will always guide you home. She, whoever your partner is. 
however you're resonating with this. Lighthouse, home, call in your angels. Like it's guiding you, Libra, okay? It's guiding you. You gotta choose it for yourself. You can't succeed. Everything's stopped. Like, you can't go anywhere unless you're going to be fair. That's the bottom line. It's got to be fair. That's what stopped it to begin with. You got to reconnect to your oneness. Reconnect to your counterpart. Yeah. Okay. So if anybody wants more insight into the month of April... You know, with the Zodiac uh, groups that I run on Facebook, I do the weekly lives there. So even if I don't post anything on YouTube for a week or whatever, I will always be in the Zodiac groups on Facebook. Uh, if you want to join just for April, it's $20 for April. The deadline is in a couple days on March 31st, so it has to be in. My Facebook.com slash Divine Rebel Readings link is in the description. Um, and if you want to pop in at any time for the remainder of the year, you can do that for 120 and you get all of the replays, you get all of the, the new lives upcoming and it's all definite time. So it all makes sense to you in, in hindsight about what was going on then. They're not timeless messages. They're definitive for 2019. So, you know, it helps. It really does help. Um, good luck with this, uh, Libra. Check your other placements, see what else is going on in your energy that you can work on. You have to get in touch with your triggers and you gotta call on your angels. Hardcore. Angel therapy. Raphael's the divine healer within. You call him into your heart space. If you've got a broken heart, you call in Archangel Raphael to help you heal your heart space. Protect it with love, not pain. Until next time. Bye.